Hey guys, welcome back to Honeycomb. Today we're gonna to be making another batch cocktail. Uh, but unlike our other batch cocktails, this one you really need to batch. There's no other way to do it except by batching this cocktail. If you're interested, make sure you follow along with our instructions. It's gonna be a good one. Now, if you guys aren't subscribed yet, make sure that you're subscribed. Click on the button down below and click the thumbs up button if you like this video. And we'll continue to make videos like this. Now, the truth is we're gonna make the videos that we wanna make, but it does help us a lot and it helps the algorithm if you click the thumbs up button on our video. So please do that and follow along on Instagram. I am at KO Kosha on Instagram. You can follow at Daily Drink Mag on Instagram and you can follow at Honeycomb Manila, which is this place here, our studio in Double Dragon Plaza. And yeah, if you're subscribed, you get all of our coffee stuff. We're doing a lot of sneaker stuff. So make sure you're subscribed and follow along. Okay, so today we're going to be making a clarified pina colada. And what that is, is that it's a pina colada style drink, except instead of having it blended with the cream of coconut and the crushed ice, we're instead going to make it a clarified, clear, sophisticated drink. Kind of similar with the kind of feeling that you get when you pour out a clear old fashioned or Manhattan, that kind of drink. Now the first thing that we're gonna do is that we're going to mix all of our ingredients together and then all of that is going to go into our clarifying agent, which in this case is going to be milk. Interested? Let's go. So step one in this entire process is to build the drink all together inside a receptacle. Now the size of our drink, even before the clarification is going to be quite a lot, it's going to be about a liter, but we've done it that way so that it's easy to remember the ratios when dealing with a bottle. We're gonna be using half of that rum bottle, which is 375 ml of aged rum. And to do that, we're going to match it with a bunch of other ingredients that are almost all 210 ml. So all you have to remember is half a bottle and 210 10 ml, and then there's, there's maybe one other thing you gotta remember. Also, if you wanted to make a large amount of this drink, then you could just do two batches of half bottle and use the entire bottle. So we're gonna mix all of our ingredients together into this uh, Hario borosilicate glass uh, container, into this carafe, and our first ingredient is going to be our piña, which is the pineapple juice. This is 100% uh, pure pineapple juice. There is some citric acid in here, which is good to note because we're gonna be needing to know that later. 200, and in this case, we did 213 ml of pineapple juice. So it's around 210, 215 ml. Uh, the next one we're gonna put in is our coke or coconut. So instead of cream of coconut, or coconut cream, they call it different things around the world. We're actually gonna be using coconut water to get the same kind of elements in there without introducing a heavy creamy element so that it makes it easier for us to clarify. So we're gonna pour in our coconut and that brings us up to 430. So yeah, it's about 215, 215. Uh, up next, we're going to put in some simple syrup and our simple syrup is going to be 110 ml so that should bring us up to 540 on the scale simple syrup is of course uh, half or one part sugar and one part water and we just mix it together at room temperature 540 total ml so far. Next, we're gonna add some bitters. We're just gonna use a little bit of Angostura bitters to give this just a little bit of extra texture. Usually, I would put around eight dashes into this. So I'm actually gonna look at the scale so that I have more or less an idea of how many dashes I'm putting into here. All right. So I put around seven ml of Angostura bitters in there and it ended up being about, what, eight dashes, but it's about the right amount I wanted to put in. Next, I'm gonna put in a little bit of vanilla flavoring. So vanilla flavoring is an inexpensive way if you don't have access to vanilla bean, which we don't always have, and I'm just gonna put just a little bit, you can see here, just a little bit from the bar spoon, and I'm just gonna put it, and that's gonna add just that extra little bit of kind of 
sweet, homey, comforting feeling, comforting taste to the drink. All right, up next, we have our rum. So first I'm gonna give this a little stir. Mmm. Smells great. I'm gonna tear my scale because I already have my spoon in there. And we're gonna put in 375 ml of our Cruzan aged rum. Now your rum doesn't have to be a very expensive, a very fancy rum, but it's smart to use an aged rum that really adds texture and pizzazz to your drink. All right, so the Cruzan rum, relatively inexpensive. Uh, of course, things cost different in different parts of the world. This is around 400 pesos here in the Philippines. And we're only gonna put half the bottle into here, which means we're spending about 200 pesos on this batch. Um, plus all the other stuff that we use, um, but generally speaking, these are not expensive ingredients so far. All right, it's actually 375 and a half ml. So very good margin for error. And as you can see, half the bottle has been used for that. All right, so now that you've seen that everything is well mixed together, we're going to now add some acid. Now the acid is very important for raising the pH level of our cocktail because the milk won't curdle. And the, the clarification process happens as the milk curdles against our solution here, our cocktail here. So what I'm adding now is 80 ml of pure uh, freshly squeezed lime juice. Now you could use lemon lemon juice in a pinch, but if you really wanted that true like pina colada flavor, you want to be using lime. It's a little bit more intense than the sweetness that we get from lemons, although Philippine limes are still kind of sweet. All right, so I'm just going to pour that in there and that's the 80 ml. And that brings us to about 100 uh, or 1000 ml of liquid all right once we've given it the good stir we're now gonna bring in our milk so this is our milk we have 215 ml of milk as i told you it's easy to remember 215 215 215 ml of milk and the secret to doing this properly is that you have to pour your entire cocktail into the milk very slowly Okay, you can't pour the milk into the cocktail. Doesn't work. You need to pour the cocktail into the milk. I cannot say that too many times. Why? Well, the curdling effect that happens with the milk actually happens as the pH balance of the milk rises. So you want to bring up that pH balance very, very slowly so that it all doesn't just curdle all at once. And if you pour the milk into this high pH solution, our cocktail that has all of that, uh, all of that vitamin C, all of that citric acid, and all of that uh, lime juice that we put in there, it's going to all curdle right away and it's not going to do its job. So what we need to do is we're gonna pour this into the milk very slowly. All right, so now our cocktail is in the milk. The milk has already started curdling. And you could actually just wait like a few minutes or 40 minutes, 50 minutes, an hour, if you were in a rush. But for the best results, you really want to leave this overnight. So I'm going to put this in the fridge and let this sit inside the solution overnight and allow it to curdle continuously. And then tomorrow, we're going to filter this out. And we're back, it's the next day, 24 hours later, and this is what our concoction looks like. So you can see that the milk has done its job and it's clarified all of our cocktail and it's coagulated, it's clotted up down at the bottom. 
Now, we need to strain this through to completely remove all of, all of the milk, basically, that's in there. And what's happened is that the milk is bound to all of those elements that make this drink cloudy. And so I think you'll be surprised, not just the, the way that this looks now, but how it'll look after we filter it. Now to filter it, we're going to use a V60 filter, which is a paper coffee filter. You don't need to wash the filter, but I wash it just because it makes it easier with the filter stuck to the V60 or stuck to your cone. If you don't have a V60, you can actually do this with a regular coffee filter and in a funnel and do it straight into the bottle. Now, this part is important. Start your pour in a different vessel and then move to your main vessel. The reason why we're doing that is because the thing that is going to be filtering and clarifying is not just the paper, but actually the milk itself. So before we pour it, we're gonna give it a stir and suspend the milk up back into the, into the drink so that when we pour it, some of the milk goes into the filter and starts the filtration process. Once it's started and we've had maybe five, six ml drip into this container, we're gonna transfer the filter cone from the small container to the big container and pour the stuff back in, the stuff we already filtered. So it goes through a second filtration process through the bed of milk that we're trying to establish. Seems complicated, but just watch, and I promise you, it's gonna make sense. So let's do it. All right, so first I'm gonna stir the milk back up into the cocktail. This seems counterintuitive because it's already clarified, right? But again, we want the milk to go down into our filter cone right away so that it has the effect of filtering the drink through itself. All right, pretty immediately you see that it's already really clear down there. The paper filter is doing a really good job of filtering the cocktail. So I'm just gonna move it really quickly. Now, sometimes that first uh, pour of cocktail won't be this clear. It'll be a little cloudy. And we want to avoid that. We want to just remove that variable and do it on a second container. Now that we know that it's okay, let's move to our main container. And I'm just going to pour this cocktail back into the top and let that filter down. Now, as you can see, it's going into the top, this milky white color and coming out the bottom completely clear. Now this is actually gonna take a while and we're gonna have to do several pours from the carafe into the filter cone. And we're just gonna keep on adding and adding this cocktail back through that milk and let it get filtered through itself to clarify the cocktail. So now this is gonna take a while. It's actually gonna take maybe 30 minutes, 40 minutes, and even when it looks like it's finished dripping, just leave it in the fridge dripping to get those remaining drops and get all of the liquid out of there because you don't want to waste it. Uh, but for the purposes of our video, I actually went ahead and made another batch, which I have right here. And this is what it looks like when it's done. Now the batch that we made should make about the same amount of cocktail as the ingredients we put in before the milk. It's almost exactly the same. Some of the proteins of the milk, similar to fat washing, uh, bind with the alcohol and it changes the mouthfeel a little bit, but you'll find that all of the flavors should be inside this bottle, inside of this drink, uh, despite the fact that it doesn't look the same. And you'll find that if you did what we did and made about 900, uh, 990 ml of cocktail, you should get around that much out as well. Maybe lose only about 50 ml in the process. So I'm gonna pop this filtration in the fridge and let it continue to filter and let's see what this drink looks like served. So we brought out the rocks glass, nice pretty rocks glass with a nice pretty big piece of ice inside. And having the big piece of ice means that it'll dilute very slowly as you drink it. And we're gonna put in two pours of our clarified pina colada. It is already cold because it's been in the fridge. 
And we are using this smaller jigger, so technically we're gonna do four pours to get up to 120 ml. And you can actually leave it like this, or you can give it a little stir just to speed up some of the dilution. Once the outside of your glass starts to kind of frost up, you know that you've got the right temperature in the glass. As you can see right off the bat, it's an elegant looking clear drink. And this is what I describe as a sophisticated serve. It doesn't have any fancy garnish or any bells and whistles. All of your flavors are there. All of them are layered and you have a beautiful drink straight forward on one big rock. And although it looks gorgeous, now the test, how does it taste? Good amount of sweetness. You can get the acid from the lime. Coconut is just there, but the pineapple really is right up in your face. The rum, you can feel a little bit of the sweetness and the burn of the rum, but it's very smooth. Like that fat washing effect from the milk has really created like this buttery texture to this pina colada. It's good. Mm. Now this bottle should last probably two weeks. I would say maybe one week in the fridge. Don't put this one in the freezer because we put a lot of kind of high water content uh, things into this like the coconut water and the pineapple juice so it will freeze. Don't put it in the freezer. But keep it in the fridge and you can serve it up at a party for your friends. They should make a good amount for a nice night of fun. All right. So that's how you do a milk clarified pina colada by the batch, batch it crazy. If you have any questions, ask them in the comment section below. My name is Keo. Please remember to subscribe, click the button down there, and follow along on Instagram. I am at Keo Caution Instagram. Follow at Daily Drink Mag on Instagram. Visit our website, www.dailydrinkmag.com. And follow us on Instagram here in our studio, Honeycomb Manila. It's at Honeycomb Manila on Instagram. All right. My name's Keo. I wish you guys good luck. I wish you guys good health. I wish you great drinks. Peace.